Excessive speed in big rigs can be a problem. Statistics have shown that in over 50% of accidents involving big trucks, speed was a contributing factor. Big trucks need a lot of space to stop. They need a lot of room. And when you're cut off by a car or when you hit a patch of ice, you need even more room. So the faster you're going, the worse it can be for you. One of the best ways to avoid being in an accident is being in control of your speed. It's a lot easier to get yourself out of trouble at 65 miles an hour than it is at 75 miles an hour. One of the best ways I find to control my speed when I'm doing interstate driving, which is most of what I did, was to use the cruise control. And I'll set the cruise control just slightly below the speed limit. That gives me two things. Number one, it tends to give me a big gap, a big stopping area out in front of the truck because the four-wheelers are always in such a hurry they'll just blow on by because you're going that much slower than they are. So it leaves a gap in front of the truck, like a safety gap, and I like that in case something goes wrong. And the other reason I do that is because if you are involved in an accident, if a four-wheeler cuts you off or something like that or forces you into the guardrail trying to miss them, you can download your ECM and prove to the authorities that you weren't speeding at the time of the accident. That's an important thing. It's nice to roll along on the interstate. You can just kind of concentrate on other things as part of your drive rather than, rather than your speed because the speed limiter on the cruise control will keep you from getting thinking about things and, and kind of leaning into it a little and putting your foot down. I know I used to be guilty of that. I'd, my mind would wander and I'd start to travel faster. The limiter on the cruise control will help you avoid that. Now having said that I like to use the cruise control on the interstate, I only use it on dry road. The moment the road surface goes from dry to anything else at all, I flip the cruise control off and there's a reason for that. If you're on cruise and you hit a patch of ice, that can be really bad news. And then when you hit the brake, instead of hitting the switch to shut it off, that just creates even more trouble. So the moment I hit anything other than dry road, I shut the cruise control off by flicking the switch off. I don't stamp on the pedal to disengage it. I flick the switch off. You know, there are all sorts of times I've saved myself from an accident because I was traveling slower than the traffic around me. Driving too fast never really got me anywhere and it never, never saved me any money. I never made any more money at it. But driving a little bit more slowly helped me miss and avoid probably hundreds of accidents in my four million miles. And it's been a big lifesaver to me. It, it not only saves fuel, it saves the truck, but most importantly, it keeps you in control of the vehicle at all times. And nothing is more important than that. And we all know the fools out there in the four wheelers these days. It takes the blink of a second to get you involved in something stupid that they've done. The more slowly you're going, the easier it's going to be to avoid the, the mess that he's created in front of you. And that's the name of the game. You don't want to be involved in the accident. Now, I have to tell you that I know some of you guys will write in because I use the word speed limiter on the cruise control. Let me clarify that. There are states and provinces that are trying to enforce speed limiters in big trucks. Not the limiters on the cruise control, but an overall speed limiter to control your speed to 65 miles an hour or 63 miles an hour or 105 kilometers an hour or whatever. Let me be clear here. I am not in favor of speed limiters on big trucks because there are all sorts of times you need to accelerate to get yourself out of trouble or to pass a vehicle safely on a two-lane road. And I feel these speed limiters take control away from the driver and anything that does that, I'm against. So I'm completely against the speed limiters as, as Ontario has enforced now. And I don't think that's a good idea. So I just wanted to get that out there for you guys. Just, just so we're clear, I like the speed limiter on the cruise control, but I do not like the speed limiter laws that they're coming up with now. One of you guys wrote in and asked about moving companies. And uh, that I, I remembered the story because briefly, very briefly, I worked for a moving company. I didn't particularly care for it because I found it was more hand bombing furniture and very little driving. 
but for a couple of months I tried I tried bed bugging and the old guy that I ran with that was teaching me had a great trick and he showed it to me right off the bat and we were doing mostly household moves so what he would do is he would get to a guy's house and the guy was moving out so he'd go to the guy that owned the house and say you know it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of money if we can just back this truck up across the lawn and get it as close to your front door as possible we'll have the truck loaded a lot faster and it'll save you money and the guy because he's selling the house and he's moving out and he doesn't care about the lawn anymore because he sold the house he goes yeah yeah great anything to save money yeah that's great so we'd back right up to the back door run a ramp out and load all the furniture in so then when we'd get to the guy's new house we would just back across the lawn automatically without asking the guy right to the front door so we could unload. And sometimes a guy would come running and go, hey, 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 my new lawn, my new lawn. And you say, well, we asked you if we could back across the lawns and you said it was okay. But the guy's go, oh, no, I'm at the old house, not the new house. And then the old fellow would sit there and look kind of puzzled for a minute and goes, yeah, no, it'll, it'll leave a lot less marks in your lawn now at this point if we take the weight off the trailer. And the host guy, the guy that owned the host, would say, "Oh, okay." And that would that would save us carrying all the furniture, hundreds of yards over the course of unloading. And it was just just a little trick to save save our backs, so we didn't have to carry it nearly so far. And and something else I learned from him too. I thought it was kind of funny that no matter what we loaded in in the trailer, and we had a checklist of all this furniture, we'd all we'd mark everything damaged, scratched dented marked nothing went on the trailer perfectly and that way if something came off the trailer and he said hey you've marked that this old guy had a record of showing oh no it was marked when we loaded it on on the truck so and that was how the how the dead bug hauler covered his butt in a situation like that i thought there were a couple of smart tricks that i learned from bed bug hauling so thought i'd share that with you stay safe you guys keep the rubber side down the weather's turning nice it's going to be beautiful out there for driving Take care and I'll see you on the back hall.